mabuhay, earn kapampangan, luwid kayo. Today's question comes from many of you. Many of my viewers, subscribers, followers, patrons, and students that I work with in person have asked me throughout the years, who was Emilio Aguinaldo? Was he a hero? Was he a traitor? Why do people hate him? If he was the first president of the Philippines, then why do people think he's bad? So for those who may not know who Emilio Aguinaldo was or is, he is best known for better or for worse as the first president of the Philippines, the only president of the first Philippine Republic. We learned this in schools in the Philippines and even in my American history textbooks in California, we learn about the Philippine American War and we learn about Aguinaldo being the president and the leader of the Filipino people. But in reality, he was never elected by the people. In fact, his election was done kind of in secret. So it wasn't like how we see elections today where people, millions of people will go out there and vote for the leaders, vote for their choices, exercise their freedom. When Aguinaldo was elected, he was elected in a private meeting of Katipuneros, the Katipunan movement or the anti-colonial revolutionary movement movement in the Philippines and it was done in his home province of Cavite. So today we know this meeting to be, or we call this meeting today as the Tejeros Convention, a meeting that happened on March 25th, 1897. But it wasn't a meeting to have an election to elect new leaders of the Philippines, of the Filipino people. But the true purpose of the meeting was actually to discuss strategy, how to strategize and defend Cavite, the province of Cavite, from the Spanish army. Because during that time, Aguinaldo and his men were actually losing ground in Cavite. They called for a meeting from from the revolutionary movement to to strategize how to def to best defend the province of Cavite. But what happened was that Aguinaldo and his men insisted on having an election. So they insisted on reorganizing the movement, the revolutionary movement of the Philippines, and establish a revolutionary government. And they insisted on having that election right there at that moment in that private meeting, even though nobody outside Tejeros knew about the election. They insisted on electing leaders without the consent of the entire movement. They insisted on having an election for the people of the Philippines without the knowledge of the Filipino people. They had no idea what was going on in this meeting. And this is where Aguinaldo was elected president after much debate and tension. So in short, this election was fraudulent. It was forced upon the Filipino people. Because again, the Filipino people had no idea this was going on. And there wasn't even any adequate representation from people from different parts of the Philippines. So it was fraudulent and forced upon the Filipino people. So the people had no consent to this election. And it was also during this election or convention that the leader or the founder of the Katipunan movement of the revolutionary movement against Spain, Andres Bonifacio, was insulted and degraded by Aguinaldo and his men. They tried to discredit him because he did not have any formal education, just because he wasn't part of the ruling upper class. So this is partly why many people think that Aguinaldo stole the presidency from Bonifacio. And tensions were so high that even after Aguinaldo won the presidency, Andres Bonifacio and his brother were murdered. Which brings me to my next point. Aguinaldo was implicated, if not directly responsible, for the gruesome murders of Andres Bonifacio, Procopio Bonifacio, and Antonio Luna. And as I've mentioned in my previous videos on the Supremo, Gat Andres Bonifacio, and General Antonio Luna, Aguinaldo's men gruesomely murdered Bonifacio, his brother, and Antonio Luna out of hate and spite, out of vengeance. So out of jealousy, on May 10th, 1897, Several weeks after the heated Tejeros Convention, Andres Bonifacio, the founding father of the Filipino Revolution against Spain, and his brother Procopio were gruesomely massacred in the middle of the rainforest up in the mountains of Cavite. They were murdered and massacred by Aguinaldo's men. They were hacked to death and showered with bullets by Aguinaldo's men. And then, two years later, on June 5, 1899, General Antonio Luna, known today as the greatest Filipino general in history, was also gruesomely murdered by Aguinaldo's men. He was also hacked to death and showered with bullets, this time in the middle of a church courtyard while Aguinaldo's own mother was watching from a window above making sure that Luna was dead. And of course, Emilio Aguinaldo would not admit responsibility for any of these murders. In fact, throughout his long life, 
he lived until the 60s, Emilio Aguinaldo vehemently denied any involvement in these crimes. He consistently passed on the blame onto other people, including the murdered victims themselves. But despite all of his defensive denials, many scholars, activists, community leaders, and common people, many believe that Emilio Aguinaldo was ultimately responsible for these gruesome crimes and that such murders were done in order to gain more power, to consolidate his status, and to secure his so-called presidency. And that is it for part 1 of this video. If you want to learn more about Aguinaldo and his relationships with the Spaniards and the Americans, tune in for part 2. Or in the meantime, you can also get a copy of my book where I wrote an entire chapter on Aguinaldo and the Americans. So that is it for me today. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, show your support and please be my patron. Dakalpong salamat. See you next time or in Tagalog Kita Kits and in Kapampangan, Miki Ticks.